So a magnet is um, uh, is really uh, a, a, a social initiative uh, run out of Ryerson University, uh, supported by the uh, Ministry of Advanced Skills Development and Education in Ontario, as well as the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. And uh, Tangerine is one of our um, founding commercial sponsors. Uh, but it really is a social change initiative that is was started to kind of address this problem that uh, Don Drummond put together. And for those of you familiar in Ontario with the Drummond Report, which was commissioned by the by the province to look at employment in Ontario and what the key challenges were, I think I think this report goes back to 2011, if I'm not mistaken. And basically, one of the key points from the report was, you know, this, right? Do we have a huge shortage of workers? No. Are they in the right place at the right time? Probably not. But I think at least half of what the problem um, at least half of that problem could get solved if we had the right information or the right tools to allow people to kind of get matched with opportunities in a lot more effective way. You know, because there are employers out there that are open to a wide variety of diversity, you know, hiring either needs or requirements for their businesses. And that just that use case by example is extremely expensive and extremely timely for employers to kind of fulfill their diversity hiring needs because because it's tough for them to get access to the right pools in easy ways. So so Magnet was created as as started, it's much more than that today, but really started as a matching platform um, that basically allows job seekers or people working with job seekers to profile their skills and um, their experiences uh, and um, their preferences for work and their requirements around employment needs and accessibility in one spot and employers that are open, you know, and that have a need to hire someone to specify the skills and the experiences they're looking for and also flag if they're open to diverse diversity hiring opportunities. So that effectively, you know, at least those opportunities could get matched against the, the people um, and the way it, without a lot of human intervention other than getting the jobs and the and the profiles into the system so kind of it's a productivity tool in the matching in the matching component of what we what you all do right um and um uh most importantly i think um the way it works at the end of the day the easiest way to sum it up is it's it's e-harmony for job seekers and the reason why i mention that is that the profiles that we that job seekers put in the system are always private. And until they apply for a job that they get invited to, and when they apply for a job, then the profile is shown to the employer. And in fact, that's what enables us to do, um, you know, to meet the needs of, of uh, diversity hiring communities and job seekers. So the fact that the profiles are private, that's, the, that's one of the fundamental core differences of this system. So founded in, uh, in 2014, um, you know, we've talked about how it uniquely connects job seekers and opportunities. And uh, we actually have over 120,000 job seekers in the system. <clears throat> Today, we have over 13,000 employers that use the system to post jobs. Um, we have over 260 partner organizations. And by a partner organization, we mean like your each of your organizations, each one, including the Mental Health Commission of Canada, would be considered an, an independent partner organization. And we have over 260 that are that are signed up and that work with us. Um, and they're not just employment service providers. They're colleges and universities, career centers, um, uh, chambers of commerce, economic development teams in in municipalities, uh, at a provincial level, and a federal level. So pretty much everyone that's involved is stakeholders in and around the, the job ecosystem. So um, <clears throat> Magnet can be a little daunting when you get to know it uh, because there really are three dimensions and each one has a lot of robust functionality but kind of looks different and you've got to put on the hat of that persona if you want that person when you're looking at how the system benefits you. So today we'll try and tackle all three dimensions, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll look at the system from the perspective of an individual, right? And individuals profile themselves in the system and they receive they get invited to opportunities, which, which is one of the things that's that's certainly transformational about the system. Uh, for any of us that have looked for employment in the past or been in between jobs and looking for the next thing, we know how intensive it is, and we know how discouraging it can be. You know, even if we're if our skills are are 
are are um, you know are good well suited for the competitive job market. It's still a daunting task. If you have um, some marks against you, it makes it even more complicated. Um, but you know we actually have had a couple of studies that are just in the final stages of being done around just the impact that Magnet has uh, for job seekers, um, even if it even if they don't end up getting a job through the system, uh, it's definitely shown that the confidence of the job seeker and their overall um, um, kind of um, feeling of success through the job uh, recruit through the job finding process goes up when they're using Magnet. So that that we have started to show kind of uh, through research we've done. So we'll we'll have more on that over the next year as we release those studies. And the employer side, the employers obviously are. While they might have a regulated mandate or you know a mission driven mandate to do diversity hiring at the end of the day, businesses are based on needs, not wants, and you know when they need to hire someone, um, they need to get it done as quickly and efficiently as possible, and this system helps them do that and then for partners, I mean we're all running a hundred miles per hour there's never enough time for us to adequately service the clients or the employers we work with. And and Magnet's really met as a productivity tool for your organizations to help you keep track of who the clients are and what the opportunities are and do some of that matching online versus what's typically done in a weekly or daily scrum session somewhere, depending on the size of your organization, if you have a lot of job developers and career counselors working with employment opportunities and with job seekers, then you know just the difficulty of keeping track of who you've got and matching the right people to the right opportunities. And that in fact, a lot of, a lot of good matches just fall between the cracks because you don't have time to physically do that. And so that's what the system is intended to do. On the diversity and inclusive front, <clears throat> really the key thing is that Magnet enables employers to send targeted postings to engage diverse, diversity candidates who have self-identified as belonging to one or more of the employment equity categories. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you what that's like specifically for diversity candidates. And we'll be making some adjustments in the system, um, you know, in uh, in January to make it a little bit easier for some of the candidates that you represent to, to be able to identify or to get information from the system related to their job search. So with that, what I'm going to do is switch over to the system and just take you through a very brief demonstration of how a job seeker uses it. Um, and again, you can, if you've got any questions, let me know. So, so this is Magnet. And for those of you that haven't found it already, the URL is actually magnet.today. So if you want to find this page, you just type in M-A-G-N-E-T dot T-O-D-A-Y. That's all you need to do, and it will take you right into, into Magnet. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Uh, when you first come to Magnet, and, and actually we do encourage people to try this out for themselves. So if you go to magnet.today, you won't have an account yet. So we do encourage you to click on join today, which would be right here, and to go ahead and create a job seeker account for yourself. Now, um, if your organization chooses to become part of the pilot and depending on the level you choose to engage with Magnet, you know, you're going to end up using your your organizational email to create an employer account later because that's the primary thing you'll be doing is working with your employers or maybe posting jobs on behalf of your employers. So if you want to try out Magnet over the holidays or you've got a friend or family member that's looking for a job and is interested, make sure they sign up as a job seeker. And this is open to everyone. <clears throat> um, and uh, use a personal email address you know, for that or, or the fastest way to log in would be if you've got a Facebook or a Google account or LinkedIn account or Twitter account already, you can actually use that to, to log in. So I've already got a job seeker account. I'm going to go ahead and log in as a job seeker. And um, I'll just reset my uh, preference here. Just give me a second. What, um, what I would see the first time I logged in after I validated my account is it's going to show me the screen, which is going to ask me to upload my most recent resume or, you know, um, so that we'll parse the resume and actually populate the profile for the individual automatically. Or, you know, if they don't have a resume, they can skip this step and they can actually go ahead and enter some experience and profile themselves. And I'm going to show you that. So uh, this has pulled in some information it kept from when I created my account. 
but I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. And uh, some basic information about magnet is when I go ahead and sorry this there we go when I go ahead and start entering I've got to start with country when you go ahead and start entering letters you see that the the list shortens down so it it, it makes it easier for job seekers to kind of summarize what they're looking for Ontario and let's just say our city is Ottawa well that's a Markham postal code <laughs> for those of you familiar and then uh, it'll it asks me two more questions what languages am I proficient in and I'll pick English, and I can say French as well. Um, and it says really what what languages do I have a working level of proficiency in? So pretty straightforward English. So hopefully, uh, you know, basically working level meaning you could effectively communicate in the workforce. And then what country am I eligible to work in? And we actually do work in other programs with a lot of recent arrivals to Canada. And so we do have people that are eligible to work in a lot of different countries. And for some opportunities, that's really important. Or it may be reflective of the background. It may be important to an employer that um, someone speaks different languages and whatnot. So important to have job. We always encourage job seekers at the net to fill in as much information as possible, as many fields as possible, because every field kind of works to your advantage. And then I'm just going to quickly put in an education experience. And here I can put in an institution. And if the institution is not on the list, I can just, although ABC School of English in London is there, <laughs> I can just type in anything I want here and add it, and it'll, it'll enter that school for me, right? Um, so I can just pick a credential. I can say that's um, a diploma, for example, and, and say the current status. My current status is I'm a graduate, and the main faculty area Again, you just start typing, and we'll say business, advertising, marketing, communications, and the start date for the program. And you can say the 14, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I won't take too many years to create my degree. So there you go, my diploma. So there you go. Hey, go ahead and continue. And that's basically it. By putting in one education experience you've had or one job you've done and the job uh, is entered slightly differently then you would have created a profile and this is what your this is your home page and the home page is really going to have four components this is our navigation bar on the left which are all the features um, and functions that a job seeker can use and then we've got our status uh, page here which are job invites I've been invited to and any applications I've done and any job applications I've archived for to review later. And then it also uh, gives me some other recommended fields if I want to do a more uh, complete job of creating my profile and the more complete the better. It's asking me to fill in a couple of fields, but this is yellow, so that's optional. I'm going to leave that for right now. And then in the middle, um, I get targeted messages. And this is kind of like a Facebook feed or your LinkedIn feed. So these are messages from community partners. And any job seekers that sign up through Magnet.today um, are going to be getting messages from Magnet um, about job search, about community initiatives, or, uh, career initiatives that are going on. They're also going to get through the six-month pilot period from Mental Health Commission of Canada. Job seekers that uh, identify as having a disability, and I'll show you that in just a second, are going to be getting some value-added messages from the Mental Health Commission of Canada on um, a, a how to have conversations with employers around accommodations and some just really useful tips and tricks that they can use. So th those would show up in the middle section. And then, then the far right section is the Magnet Twitter feed. So you just keep, this is just having our all of our most recent tweets and Facebook posts here so you can see what's um, what's what we're communicating about and talking about. <clears throat> So back to how the user would use the system. Uh, so they've got a resume. And uh, one of the next things the, uh, the job seeker would be prompted for, but because I already created this account, um, I, I was prompted for it pre previously. But they would, after they put in their basic information, they would be prompted to say, you know, would you like to self-identify as a member of a diversity group? Right? And... Um, 
I'm just going to read you this one paragraph because you probably can't see it really well, but it describes kind of how this works. So your self-declarations will be visible only to you, only when you apply for positions that request applicants from a diversity target group that you identify with. And in each case, you will be asked for your consent to disclose. Your self-declarations will not be disclosed to employers when you are applying for jobs that are not marked as diversity target postings. Your self-declarations will be stored only in your account and will not appear in your resume. So what this means effectively is that by self-declaring in one of these categories, you prefer not to declare or in your indigenous uh, LG, LGBTQ uh, members of a visible minority, person with disabilities, and that's the category where all of your job seekers you're working with uh, would check off. So we're keeping it very high level. Um, so we're not we're not segmenting it down to people with mental um, uh, issues versus people with physical issues. It's just going to be people with disabilities, women or newcomers to Canada within the last five years. Now, what's going to happen in January? We're making a change to the system related to this pilot. When individuals do click on person with a disability and select that, there's going to be a sub pop-up that's going to come up, which just says, hey, hey, you know, because you've identified as a person with disabilities, while it won't change your, um, your identification here, would you like to receive information on, and there'll be a variety of topics. And, and uh, I think three of those topics are going to be information uh, uh, related to mental issues, uh, mental health issues that we're working on with the Mental Health Commission of Canada, and then there'll be other categories like physical disability and others, so that uh, job seekers can further kind of uh, uh, specify the, the information they want from Magnet without self-declaring at a lower level. So um, the other thing I wanted to point out is while this, uh, what I think I commented before, this only works in a job seeker's benefit, it never works against them. So in other words, the only time this would ever um, be visible is if an employer specifically says, I'm going to target this job at people that have identified as persons with disabilities. And if an employer does that, then the job posting only, the invites only go to people with disabilities that also match, you know, as best as possible, the job requirements. So the experiences and the education that the employer is looking for. So in that case, it's working to their advantage. And then if another job, another employer posts a job, but doesn't I target it at people with disabilities, it's a sales, you know, or, um, you know, barista position or whatever. And, um, you know, they don't specifically target with people with disabilities. Uh, and that that uh, job meets the, the uh, skills and experiences of one of your job seekers, then they're going to get invited to it as well. And in that case, that employer would have no, um, no idea really that this individual has any, any disabilities, right? So it's always working for the job seeker and never against them, uh, basically. <clears throat> and then the last section is, uh, this is probably an important one. Um, as you do get into this with job seekers, this is going to be more of a training note than anything else or, or for yourselves. When you go back in there, when you've gone in there and created a profile, make sure you go to your resume and you update your opportunity preferences. Because um, this narrows down the types of jobs you're going to get invited to and the number of jobs you're going to get invited to. And it's going to narrow it down by opportunity type. So I can limit it to say I'm only interested in part-time work. I would just select that. Or if I want part-time and um, you know uh, internship opportunities, I'll select both of those. And and my anything I get matched against will be further limited by only opportunities which are in those two categories. I can also put in functional areas, so if I'm only looking for HR or sales positions or both, a combination of both, I can put those in. And then most importantly, I can put in a country and a, and a, and a, and a um, province and a city and then, and then a location and then a distance from the geographic center of that city. So you see up here, I've added in that I'm only looking for opportunities within 35 kilometers of Ottawa, okay? So just as a, you know, public service announcement for yourselves, if you're creating an op um, 
uh, or any of your job seekers, if they're creating an account, make sure they go in and set the opportunity preferences. Because the common problem over a six month period is that job seekers get too many invites and not enough invites to opportunities. And the intent of this platform is to really give you very targeted, very, very targeted opportunities. And as you can imagine, some employers put in jobs that are fairly wide open, right? Even if they're targeting a, a, the diversity, the disability diversity group, um, you know, they could put in very, very loose criteria. A barista might be an example, um, you know, or a warehouse, you know, a position, for example, peer later, uh, you know, hires 5,000 people in Canada between to work between November 15th and December 22nd. Um, they're actually great jobs. They're from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. and they pay above minimum wage and you're basically sorting boxes in one of their facilities. Great second job for lots of people. But if you don't have your opportunity preferences tightened up to what you're looking for, you're going to get invited to those kind of jobs, right? Because your experiences are are, are that plus whatever else you have, uh, you're going to get invited to a lot. So please do add that. So sorry, end of end of public service announcement, but, but important not only to show you the functionality of the system, but also kind of how it works for people. So then once they've completed, um, you know, their profile, they're going to get invited to opportunities. And we're in our demo system here, so you see a number of closed opportunities. But they, they would get an email, and they would see the opportunity. They'd be able to go in and take a look at the opportunity, and they'd be able to see the entire posting here and what's required. And then uh, also, they'd be able to click on how I match up. And if I matched against this, now this is matching me for other reasons, but these are the core kind of uh, requirements the employer has. And there'd be a check marks here along these uh, numbers one to seven where I matched against one of these opportunities. So the, the job seeker gets to say, okay, before I apply for this, you know, how well matched am I for this opportunity? And uh, this position is currently closed, but if the position was open, there would be a apply button right here. And I click that apply button. And at that point, uh, only at that point, would my profile, which is everything on my resume, with the exception of the diversity uh, option, um, would be shown to the employer or my opportunity preferences, right? Because as you may have noticed, I have the ability to make this private or to make it visible to employers if I choose, right? That's up to the job seeker. So once I've applied for the job, the employer can see what's on my resume here, okay? Um, the second major way that job seekers can use the system is they can, as a, so they've set up a profile and they don't need to do anything else. And, you know, if they're particularly, I think if they're open to or looking specifically for positions that have diversity hiring requirements, they should just set it and leave it and they'll get an email when one of those opportunities comes along. But if they want to get proactive about their job search, they can go ahead and they can go ahead and proactively do a job search, much, much like any other job board. As a matter of fact, um, there's really a couple of key features of this. So I can, I, can, I can select a number of different job boards here. So I can select Magnet, and I can search for all the positions on Magnet. These are all of the positions on Magnet right across the country. I could have narrowed that down um, you know, by position type. So let's just say I was looking for business support services, services, and then I update that, and I'd only see jobs that are business support services, or I want to narrow it down by location. There's a number of uh, different options I've got here, right? So I could narrow it down to opportunities that are in Canada, <clears throat> Ontario, and Ottawa. Right. And even though, you know, the system's going to match me against things I qualify for, I may want to just go ahead and use the system proactively as any um, uh, job board. And there you see there's two there's two jobs in Ottawa in the system right now that are business support service jobs. OK, um, I can also search on um, Canada Job Bank. Sorry, I can search on Magnet. Okay, this, so that, that was Canada Job Bank. So these are the magnet opportunities. These were the Canada Job Bank opportunities. And these are jobs by Indeed. So in one spot, the job seekers can search three different job boards. And the great thing is uh, when they go in to take a look at these jobs, they can actually capture those jobs as part of their job search. And I'm sorry I'm bouncing around a little bit here. 
Uh, but I can then go in and track any of the jobs I want. I can add those to my job application list. And even if I haven't applied for these jobs, I can go ahead and track them. And I can click on any one of these things and I can look down detailed into the, all of the information from the original posting. And this is really important because, you know, anyone in a job search process knows that sometimes an employer, you know, will take some time to get back to the job seeker or to even go through the applicants before they make their final, go through their final hiring process. And uh, they may, they may, this job posting may be gone from the web you know, by the time they do that. And so if the job seeker doesn't have the original job posting, they may not be equipped well to respond to that phone call or to that email saying, hey, we're interested in looking at you for this opportunity. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is I can also, on a proactive basis, without looking at those, um, those, uh, those three uh, job boards, I can go to any web page. I can open a new tab and I can go to any company on the planet and I can take a look at jobs. And I want to look at jobs that help customers thrive in personal banking here at RBC. And uh, let's take a look at what jobs are available. And it'll come up with a list of jobs here. And let's just pick mortgage specialist here in British Columbia. And I'll say, okay, I'm kind of interested in this job. I want to, I want to find out more about this. I'm going to talk to my counselor about this. Or, you know, I'd like to know more about this kind of role and whether I'm qualified or not. So all they have to do is go ahead and click this little magnet button magnet job tracker and it will take all of the relevant information off of that web page this could be any web page on any company you know on the internet and they can save that job application and then that job application has been saved back here inside of my magnet system and one of your job seekers can come in and then have a discussion with one of your counselors to say hey what do you think about this mortgage specialist job here's the requirements um you know do you, do you think this would be a good match or not? Or I want to do a little bit of research. And and they can click on the original link and go back to the job posting so they never lose track of it in the hiring process. Okay, I'm going to just quickly now move any questions on the job seeker side. Okay, I'm going to move over to the view from an employer perspective. This is going to be very similar uh, you'll just see, I've actually switched over now. Um, you'll see that what's really changed is my resume is now my job postings. Everything else is pretty much the same. And this shows you a bit of a dashboard on the number of jobs you've posted and the number of people that have applied, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and really quickly and show you how to create a job posting. Um, I'm going to go ahead um, and um, <clears throat> if you sign up for an employer account, you can you would have your company name there. Uh, for community partners that sign up as a magnet partner, they can change the name of the employer because you're really acting in a lot of cases as a recruiter on behalf of employers and your post, typically the employment service providers we work with post jobs on behalf of employers because they're managing kind of the matching process in a lot of cases. So we'll go ahead and just, just want to show you really a quick view of how to enter a job. I'm going to say that I'd like the application to come through the magnet system, but if I am a, if I do, if I'm a large employer and I have my own applicant tracking system, I can just click on this button and put in the URL for the job in my applicant tracking system, as RBC would have, for example, and have applicants be directed to that in-house system. And if I'm a small employer, sometimes they don't want to deal with the complexity of these systems. So they just say, hey, anybody that matches, that applies for the job, have them send me an email, right? So you just put in your email address and it'd be a very straightforward process. But I'll forward through the magnet process here. We'll leave magnet as the default. <clears throat> and I'm going to say that I also want, by the way, when applicants apply, I do want them to provide a resume, a cover letter, and I want them to provide a, a transcript. And the job is sales, and this is going to be an individual contributor entry level role. Magnet has these nice little information buttons everywhere. So if your job seekers or the employers are not clear on what they are, any of the any of the requirements are when you click on the information button, it actually walks through each of the different options and what they mean. And this is actually really great for people that are new to the Canadian job market or new to the job market, you know, in general, like students and whatnot. So that they get a better feel of the language of the job market. And I'm going to say that this job is sales <clears throat> as the function, and the job's role is to sell stuff. 
But here, typically, you would copy and paste your full job description in, right? So if I took if I took this mortgage specialist at opportunity, um, I would do this typically if I was a a developer, job developer. <clears throat> I would copy that and I would paste it into there <laughs> and all the requirements would be in the system. And then I just need to fill in a few more things. I just have to put in the location, obviously for matching purposes. <clears throat> okay, and then a couple of other fields and we'll be done. The job type, this is full-time. Compensation is just gonna be paid, fixed, plus a bonus because it's a mortgage specialist and the start of the work would be December 29th. And the end of, this is an open-ended, this is a permanent position, so we'll leave it open-ended. Languages, I want someone that speaks English and French, and I can also say, well, English must have, French is a should have, so that's a nice feature. Say there's one position open, if you had multiple, you could list, you know, change the number. And then the applicant, application deadline we're going to put the 22nd <clears throat> and that's basically the posting so the job's ready ready to go to the job board ready to be sent out to people but now we need to know okay well how do you want us to match against the 120,000 people in the system and i'm just going to say uh for the sake of argument i'll pick the same education filter i'm going to i'm going to match on education I'm looking for people with a diploma i'm looking for people with a diploma in business <clears throat> I'm looking for people that have graduated and they should have that or they must have that. You can put a preferred institution in. So if you want uh, Algonquin to be the preferred institution, we can put that in. And uh, actually, I am going to put that in. <clears throat> We're going to say should have, but or you could say must have, which would limit you know, the job invites just to graduates from Algonquin College. Well, we'll just leave it as should have for this discussion. And um, and then you can have a grade point average, which a lot of employers want. We use the letter system because the number system isn't consistent. So pick a letter system. And now this tells me how it's going to target that posting against our base of job seekers. Okay. And what this tells me immediately is that and the job hasn't gone live yet, but this is a big benefit to our service providers um, and to and to um, and to our employers. So if you as a service provider were posting this job opportunity that you have through one of your employers, um, this is default to matching against just your job seekers. OK, just the job seekers in your population. So you can see already that by putting your requirements in, if your job seekers have profiled themselves in the system, it's done that matching for you. And there's 137 people that match for this job. Um, but at this point, you know, if I'm pure later, I'm probably saying to yourself, well, I need to hire 5,000 people. So this, num this, this job posting is too specific. I'm going to open this up to, you know, I'm going to go back and change the criteria because this number should be more like 10 or 15,000 people. So I'm going to, but if you're if you're an employer looking to do diversity hiring, you may want to narrow it down. So I can add another education filter, work experience, specific skills I'm looking for. But for the case of today's discussion, we're going to add the diversity filter. And here as an employer, I'm basically going to have to just agree that I'm going to use the employment, I'm going to follow the employment standards laws of Canada. I'm not going to use this to disadvantage any workers but I am going to use this to categorize people and to target people in specific communities. And here I would just say, okay, I wanna target people with disabilities or women and must have any or, or either one of those categories and then hit continue and then see what happens. Okay, and then my qualified candidates goes down to one. So, um, I know statistically, right, that of 137 people, probably, depending on where you are in the country, somewhere between 50 and 52% of those are women. Um, but we got this narrowed down to one because, you know, most likely, you know, someone chose to self-identify as part of that diversity group, right, to take advantage of the fact, uh, which they can legally in Canada if they're a woman, and that they want to be targeted for those opportunities. So. Um, this narrows down the criteria for me. And th this for employers, as a service provider, 
Um, I think the common problem we all have in the community, or one of the common problems is finding enough employers that want to use our services and that are open to users and our services. But I'll tell you my perspective as an employer um, for over 30 years and currently still in a position where I'm hiring people. Uh, if a, an employment counselor was working with me and they were trying to get my business to work with my organization, and they showed me this, <laughs> that as they were filling out my job requirements, numbers of qualified candidates were coming up, I would work with that organization because this tells me they have their act together and um, this is a pretty transformational kind of tool to have. Um, so at this point though, here's the job, right? I copy and pasted that job description in. I've put all the information in. I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things. One of the neat things about the system is if I didn't have this information to copy and paste, it takes the ten, it takes the information I have put put in from drop down menus and it creates a natural language uh, paragraph for me. So if you recall for the education requirements, I chose a number of options. But what it's put in the job posting is a natural language description of that. It says the ideal candidate should be a graduate. Candidates must have earned a diploma. Candidates must be from the business faculty with an academic focus on advertising and marketing communications. Candidates from Algonquin Co College will be preferred. Those who have achieved an academic grade average of A or better will be preferred. Um, so there you go. And these are my target diversity postings, which I can go ahead and I can edit. So if I want to take off one of these, you know, and go back again, <clears throat> I can change them. Um, and I can say should have, and this should go back up to the 137, right? Because I said should have, it's not forcing that requirement. So once I'm happy with the job, this is where I go ahead and activate it. At this point, nothing's happened yet. So even if you're working within your community and you're trying to profile, well, how many people meet this requirement for this employer without posting the job, you can just quickly go through and put in the criteria. And as long as you have your job seekers have created accounts in the system, you'll be able to use this to, to kind of get a sense of how many meet those requirements. Uh, the final point on posting is when I go ahead and activate this, um, the posting is reviewed by our magnet team by human beings. So there is a delay between the time you activate this and the time the job goes live. And we do validate that the employer is legitimate and the job is legitimate. And if there's anything suspect about this job or this employer, then the job, it doesn't go through. It puts gets put in a pending file and we go, we spend the time to get in touch with the employer. Um, you know, to make sure all of our concerns are appeased before the job actually goes out to those 137 people and to the and to the job board. So that you should rest assured that your job seekers are getting jobs that are screened through our criteria first. Uh, that's that's very important to all of our community stakeholders. <clears throat> so that that's basically the way the system works. Um, once. Uh, the job is activated and gone out, then I can go and um, uh, look at uh, my applicants. And I would, let's just pick this manufacturing engineer. This is a job that's been posted. And the job has gone out to X amount of people and two people have applied for this job. And now I can go ahead and view the profile of Leona. And I can see Leona's profile, her magnet profile here, everything she shared with me. But I can also see how did Leona match against my job requirements. Uh, you know, if I have a lot of postings I'm dealing with, I might not remember the original posting, which happens quite often. So I can look at the original posting here and I can see the media that, that uh, Leona shared with me, in this case, the cover letter and the resume. And then even within the system, if I want to contain all, this, all the communications with Leona in system here, I can send messages back and forth in the system. And this is useful if there's more than one recruiter, you know, working on a file then they can all look at the communications that's gone on with the job seekers. So that, that's basically the closed loop. <clears throat>